The United States got another reality check to revisit and rethink its gun laws. This time it took 19 lives to make the U.S. government understand that the issue of gun violence is getting out of control. According to a new report, more American children are dying because of gun violence than motor vehicle related crashes. Official data says that there is a strong rise in gun related homicides. More than 4,300 children and adolescents up to the age of 19 died from firearms in the year 2020. On the other hand, 4,036 deaths were linked to motor vehicle accidents or crashes. The gap has been narrowing as road safety measures have improved over the decades. However, gun-related violence has only gotten worse. The report also says that gun violence rose during the COVID-19 pandemic. Reasons behind such a development are not known. The deaths disproportionately impact black children and adolescents, who are more than four times likely to die as white children. For them, motor vehicle accidents still pose a greater threat. Second most vulnerable group to gun violence is American Indians and then Hispanics. Male children are six times more likely to die by a gun than females. Gun-related death rate is the highest in Washington, Louisiana and Alaska. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration spearheads vehicle safety, but there is no agency to regulate gun safety. Historically, governments have provided very little funding for research in this area because of opposition by Republicans. Joining us from Washington, D.C. to discuss this is Edward P. Joseph from the faculty of John Hopkins Says. Mr. Joseph, welcome to We On. Thank you very much. Nice to be with you uh, here from Johns Hopkins uh, University School of Advanced International Studies. Great to be with you, Eric. Now, Joseph, former President Trump has rejected gun regulations. This is what he says, and I'll read it for you. All of us must unite, Republicans and Democrats. What we need now is a top-to-bottom security overhaul at schools all across America. And just like other leaders, Trump says the government needs to drastically change their approach to mental health. Joseph, what do you make of Trump's statements and why is it so difficult for the U.S. to tweak the laws when it comes to guns? Um, Eric, it's a, those are great questions. And uh, I, uh, Edward Joseph, am uh, as outraged uh, and puzzled uh, by this as, as so many other Americans and indeed uh, individuals around the world who just cannot believe how such a, an advanced country like the United States can tolerate these uh, statistics, which are more than just statistics. They're the lives shattered, as we saw in Texas, lives permanently ruined, uh, 19 children slaughtered and two teachers. And, and these incidents far too frequent. And of course, we've seen from the report that you cited that these are not just sensational cases that happen once or twice, but daily in this country, um, people are being killed by uh, firearms to the tune of over 120 deaths a day by uh, firearms, and half of which are homicides. So between 50 and 60 people are dying every day in the United States. And as you cited correctly, Eric, this report just came out this week, um, by it published in the uh, New England Journal of Medicine, uh, shows that now gun violence is the leading cause of death among youths, that is up to age 19. It exceeds even car accidents or drug overdoses. It's the number one cause, uh, uh, death from firearms. Uh, and uh, we see with the comments of President Trump, of course, why this is such a problem, because uh, those uh, individuals like former President Trump, uh, hopefully who will remain always former President Trump, and the Republican Party simply stand in the way. They want to distract, as uh, President uh, Trump did yesterday at this convention of the National Rifle Association, and blame it on mental health, as if the availability of weapons had nothing to do with the carnage, as if the availability of an assault rifle, this AR-15 that this individual used in Texas, had nothing to do with the, with the extent of the carnage. And the, the reason why the Republican Party can get away with this 
Uh, those, uh, Eric, I can explain to you, that has to do with our political system. It has to do with the NRA and lobbying, and it has to do with a longstanding gun culture in this country, um, uh, going back to the fact that the uh, uh, right to bear arms is in the Constitution and that, um, that there is no rational discussion about uh, the responsibilities that come with gun ownership, only the freedom to carry guns. Please. Mr. Mr. Joseph, let me ask this. Is there a solution in sight? Because we have been talking about gun violence and the gun violence epidemic in America for such a long time. Is there a solution in the offing? Well, there are steps that are in the right direction, not wholesale solutions. There is a bill that passed the House of Representatives uh, uh, known as HR8 that would require these uh, at least these background checks that would be at least a step in the right direction. And that bill, HR8, languishes in the United States Senate uh, because Republican senators simply will not vote on this. And uh, one of them, Senator Kramer of North Dakota, was very candid about this. He said, he admitted, if I uh, vote for this type of measure, such measures, which are people agree really are common sense, I will be thrown out of office. That's because of the political structure we have where um, the uh, only political competition takes place within the primaries. And it's in the primaries where these most extreme uh, gun advocates and advocates of other issues, um, for example, opposition to a uh, abortion. So you get a situation, this incredible irony, Eric, where in our country, where those voices that are loudest about right to life, uh, right to life of unborn children are uh, do nothing about the deaths of young people uh, in the name of individual freedom. So they're all about uh, uh, protecting unborn, but do nothing to protect the living children. Uh, in this country. And and again, this is uh, uh, also a problem of leadership. You have um, uh, irresponsible figures like Donald Trump and those in the Republican Party who simply pander to this uh, um, rather than recognizing mm -hmm. that it is a severe public health problem and uh, uh, an epidemic of gun violence across the country. And we now know it's confirmed by statistics. Please. Mr. Joseph, finally, let's move away from the legislation and the policies and the lawmakers. But in your sense, what will it take for the government in America to address what has come to be known as a national security threat? Uh, it, it, it will take, for one, it will take uh, recognition on the part of these gun owners themselves that uh, they are contributing to this problem. Mm -hmm. and, and that with rights come responsibilities, that you cannot just say, I have the freedom, and that there's this constitutional amendment, uh, the Second Amendment, right to bear arms, and, and I get to buy a weapon that uh, exceeds any necessity of anyone for any hunting value, like that used in this Texas uh, horrific massacre of these children. The, the answer to the question, is when gun owners themselves uh, begin to recognize that with rights come responsibilities and that this is not just about someone's freedom and right to bear arms. It's about the right of children to be able to go to school without fear of mass shootings. It's the right of people to go to a grocery store like in Buffalo without the fear of mass shootings and that there are no solutions other than regulating the access. It is not about armed guards. There was an armed guard in the Buffalo um, grocery store, a former police officer, in fact, who challenged and even shot at the uh, gunman that then proceeded to massacre 10 people. So these distractions that President Trump and these other completely irresponsible leaders have, this is the problem, Eric, when it's within these supporters of guns themselves. They have to quit the NRA and they have to demand of their own leaders that yes, uh, with our rights to own guns come responsibilities. There's no danger in background checks to infringing on anyone's right to uh, own a weapon and that we insist on common sense 
requirements about safety, about securing these weapons at home, and, and about doing background checks and examining who who is it who, who is buying these weapons? Is it someone who's mentally ill? And that is the change that we need. We need those voices to speak up in addition to the vast majority of Americans who are, who are sick and tired of these massacres and want sensible gun restrictions. Please. We'll have to end it there. Live from Washington, D.C., Edward P. Joseph, thank you very much for making time and for talking to we on today. Thank you. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.